here we are again. Good afternoon, everybody. Seven o'clock UK time, Sunday, 29th, the end of the month, almost May. Now, as you know, I've been in Facebook jail and still in Facebook jail. Got a few more days to go, I think about six months probably before I get back on the Facebook. But I don't really care about Facebook. Now, I want to recap with you over the last two months. I'm going to take you right back to before the two Russians, the daughter and the father, mysteriously got uh, chemically attacked and um, but survived. God bless them. You know, they didn't need to die. But now, so much has happened in the last two months since it's happened. We've had half the world, Theresa May, that other twat, and I will call him a twat, Boris Johnson, loudmouth, idiot, Coco the Clown, Krusty the Clown, whatever you want to call him, he's a twat. All pointing fingers at the Russians. We was told that it was definitely the Russians. We was told without a shadow of a doubt it was made in Russia. It was the Russians. They're the only ones that could do it. Yeah, remember that? We was also told that the Russians needed to bump them off. And uh, MI5, MI6, the CIA, the FBI. What a shower of shit they are. All coming out, fooling everybody. They fooled Donald Trump. They fooled Theresa May. Well, anybody could fool that stupid bloody cow. And that idiot in France. They all got fooled by the rhetoric. No evidence. Media garbage. Pumped out by some crony company called Bell Potter. Media Corporation. They always seem to be in the hot spots at the right time. Making up these phony videos. Don't take my word for it. You can see it on RT News. I mean, they made that video with that little boy getting his face washed off. Some idiot going, psh, 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 squirting some shit in his eyes to make them look even redder than they already were. No chemicals at all. There was none found. The ones that you did see in the footage, so-called gas canisters, conveniently planted in a double bed, <laughs> and in somebody else's living room, and they didn't go off. That's amazing. You know, most of those bombs that come out of the sky over there, the barrel bombs, generally go off. They don't, they're not duds, they go off. Anyway, let's get back. Right, the two Russians. They survived, they're out of hospital. Um, don't know where they are, we haven't heard any more about them in the news. But it makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know, we was told by certain people on the news that it was the most purest form that you could get, really. Now, I'm going to re re reiterate here. I've been around a long time in this world, so I know what I'm talking about. <coughs> when you're dealing with chemicals like that, in their purest form, they are absolutely deadly. Nobody survives it. You know, and anybody who's been in the army like I have, and you've been in the gas chamber doing your, uh, you know, training for tear gas and stuff like that you know damn well what it's like the first mouthful you get it slaughters you so people who've been in the army know exactly what i'm talking about you know i've done my chemical biological weapons training way way back you know the early 70s so i know what i'm talking about but let me tell you nobody survives that type of chemical attack now <coughs> if you saw the footage on tv there was guys there with disc grinders and nuts and spanners and God knows what. They took away the park bench. <coughs> they covered up a police car with a canvas and stuck it on the back of a low loader. Ooh, dodgy! Got to get rid of that. Took all the crap out of that bloody um, restaurant. Tables, chairs, furniture. They washed down things, bus shelters and God knows what else. 
But when it came to the footage of where that guy lives, do you remember that? Tiny little cul-de-sac. And there it was, his house taped off with blue tape. Police incident do not enter. One PC plod standing outside wondering what the frickin' hell am I doing here? It's bloody cold, I want a cup of tea. But the next door neighbour's house, no, they can come and go. And the neighbour the other side, no, they can come and go. And all the other neighbours in the cul-de-sac, no, they can come and go. In this purest form, spread on the door. And like I did say in my last blogs, the only one who survived and carried on working was the postman. Now, the postman sticks shit through the door every day, in everybody's houses. Now, don't you think that the postman would have been the first one to die? And not only that, if he'd have carried on his job and gone round all the other houses in that estate and everywhere else he went back and most probably got back to the post office or the sorting office and spread it around a bit more, there would have been not two people, there would have been thousands of people and they would have needed a shitload of trucks to take all the chemical contaminated stuff away. But no, no, it didn't happen. And PC Plus just standing outside the house thinking, oh well, another day, another dollar. I'm on overtime, I don't care. In its purest form, bullshit. You know what? You can go into the supermarket, go along the shelves, pet shelves, gardening shelves, and you can buy some of the most horrendous chemicals out. For what? Killing weeds and bugs. How many of you ever read the small print on the back of those bottles? Do not breathe in. If you fumigate your house, make sure you're out for eight hours. When you do come in, make sure the place is well aired. Because it can bloody well kill you! Now that crap is sold on the shelf in the supermarkets. Pets at home, you can buy all that shit. Right? And that's in its purest form as well, because it does kill those bugs. You all see them laying there with their fleeting feet up in the air, dead as a doornail, and you have to go around with a vacuum cleaner and suck them up. <laughs> Very good. But something in its purest form, put on a doorstep, or on a door, you know, in its purest form, and it didn't even kill them. What a load of crap that was. And everybody pointed the fingers at the Russians. Well, it all backfired, didn't it? It didn't bloody work. Theresa May and her bullshit with Boris Johnson right behind her, backing her up. And all the other bloody idiots in the parliament backing her up because they listen to the MI5, they listen to MI6, they listen to the CIA and all that other bloody crap. And there was Mr Putin. Well, you know, really, prove it. Prove it. Even the programme on Porton Down that come out. RT News went down and interviewed them after Boris Johnson turned around and said, Yes, they definitely said that it was Russian, it was the Russians that did it. I can tell you that's exactly what they said. But when they were interviewed by RT News, that's not what Porton Down said. They had the top man from Porton Down there, and he said, We are not here to tell you where it came from. All we're here to do is to tell you what it is. And if we can do something about it, we'll do it. He said, We did not say anything like that. No such word to Boris Johnson. He lied to get you, the public, to fall in line and believe it. Oh, it's the Russians! It's definitely the Russians! Well, it didn't bloody work, did it, Theresa May and all them other freaking idiots out there? So, because that didn't work, Theresa May said, right, let's get the inspectorate in there. We'll prove it without a shadow of a doubt. Now, what kind of bloody Prime Minister says they're going to send in the inspector on Thursday or the Friday? On the Friday night, Saturday morning, she got in touch with France and she got in touch with America. They all got together and said, right, bomb the freaking place. Let's knock it out. Really? Anybody in the armed forces will tell you. I will tell you. Anybody in the know who deals with chemicals will tell you. You do not bomb a chemical plant. It's absolute suicide. You cannot bomb chemical plants unless you're going to use extreme heat. And even then, it's going to get away. And it's going to pollute 
a very, very, very big area, thousands of people will die. Cats, dogs, cattle, women, children, you name it, will be dead. And it will be a no-go zone for ages until they test the air. Right? So no, they bombed it. And then when Theresa May was uh, questioned about it, oh, well, you know, why did you have to do this? You know, why didn't you come to Parliament? And then some cock and ball story about a Prime Minister does not have to uh, notify the government of any action in that recess. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. When we went to war with the Falklands, did not Margaret Thatcher go to the Queen to get her approval? What about Iraq? Wasn't there some approval from the Queen about Iraq? But here we are, Theresa May don't even have to consult the Queen now. She can just press a button, pop, and go to war. And where does that leave us? Now, like I said in there, none of you will worry about it because it's a world away. We're over here, it never happened to us. And I did say in one of my last blogs, what are you going to do when the bombs start dropping out of the sky on us? It kills your friends, your neighbours, it kills you. Oh, what's happened? What's happened? This has never happened. This wasn't in the news. We weren't told this was going to happen. Well, let me tell you, when you've got somebody like Theresa May in charge of this country that takes it on her own actions to go to war, right, in the middle of the bloody night when everybody's asleep. Now just what, what would have happened if it had backfired? And you woke up four o'clock Saturday morning, missiles crashing down, bombs going off, gas going off here in England. Really, really. That's what could have happened. Why have we got a person like Theresa May and her cronies that follow her in power. We didn't put them in power for that. We didn't even put them in power to take us to war. They don't give a toss about you or me. As long as they get what they want. Now anybody who wants to go to war in the middle of the night not and tell their country, 70 million people live in this country, thereabouts. But nobody had a clue. Because it all happened on a Friday night, Saturday morning. Maybe the nurses, the police, the fire brigades, and those who work at night may well have caught it early news. But where are they going to go? Go running around knocking everybody up. We're going to war, we're going to war. Quick, 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 get up, get out, get in the cellar, do whatever you've got to do. We've gone to war. At four o'clock in the bleeding morning, really. And everybody got up on Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's that? Oh, it's not a bad day today. Quick, put a kettle on. Let's have something to eat, cup of tea. I'll switch the news on, and there you have it, on the news. It's already happened, three or four hours. While you were still snoring your heads off, this all happened. And Theresa May, she don't care. Now I know a lot of you people have a go at Corbyn, but he was the only person that said, I err on the side of caution about this. We need to get more evidence, we need to get the proof. And everybody ridiculed him, ignored him, laughed at him. You had Theresa May sitting in the front row in the parliament, rolling her eyes out going, Oh, here we go again. Yeah? Well, Theresa May, he was bloody well right. As much as you don't like him, he was right. And that's what we need in this country. Somebody who uses his bloody head and doesn't listen to these bloody idiots the media and these phony companies creating war now why would they create war well let's face it we need to get out of Europe we've got to find a way of getting people on the bandwagon it was getting too stale it wasn't working so we'll change the scenery so let's have a little phony war well that didn't work did it the two Russians survived, and they went off. <clears throat> then we had this, let's go bomb Syria in the middle of the night. That didn't work, and it's now been proven there was no bloody gas there at all. Nobody launched anything. 
except for terrorists who wanted to stir up shit to get another war. And I wonder where the money came from to back those terrorists or the film companies to concoct a bullshit story and put it on mainstream news around the world and everybody fell for it. And the Russians just sit there and say, well, you know, you're making some pretty wild accusations here, but you still need to prove it. But nobody ever did. And now the proof has actually come out. People choose to ignore it. Well, it's not what we want to hear. We'd rather listen to the lies, they're more believable. When you turn around and say, well, it never happened and it's not true, and that poor little kid that had a hosepipe stuck over his head and shit sprayed in his eyes, and he's now been on the news, and the media are still trying to make it look like he was coerced into coming, forced into coming, and all the doctors were liars, everybody else was liars, the people who lived there were liars. But funny how none of them died. They're all there. They're all breathing. They didn't die of chemical attacks. Like I said, when chemicals go off, they don't just stay in one spot. They blow with the wind. They go downwind. It's not a few people, a few handfuls of people. It's hundreds of people. You would have seen in film reports over there, not just the odd kids getting a bath with a frickin' hosepipe and shit sprayed in their eyes. Funny how all the adults could run around and wash the little kids and pick them up and put them on the shelf. There you go, you're going off to hospital in a minute. But none of the adults were there dousing their bloody heads, washing themselves down. No, no. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It was false. It was phony. It was a red flag. Anyway, now we got to the bottom of that. So that didn't work for Theresa May. So we need something else. Oh. The Windrush incident, that's going to get people's minds off. Well, that's bloody backfired on the Conservative government. Because who was the Secretary of State at the time? Theresa May, when it was brought in. But now she's Prime Minister. She's pushed the buck to the new one, Miss Rudd. She's the one that's the fault. She knew what was going on, but she lied on camera. No, I didn't know there was any targets. There was no targets. But it now turns out there was loads of bloody targets. And this is the way your country treats you. Now, my friends, we put these people into power to run our country fairly and above board. But everything is a goddamn lie. They thrive on lies. They forget what they say sometimes. So you've got to be a damn good liar to remember what you said a couple of weeks ago because it all gets thrown back in your face by people like me and other people out there that watch and listen and think well you didn't bloody say that two weeks ago you lying shit you lie through your back teeth just save your own ass right so that's all done and dusted now the wind rush takes precedence really what's going to be next oh Hang on, I'll tell you what's going to be next. Mr Trump is coming to London, but the Mayor of London has already said he's banned from London. He ain't coming here. We don't want him in here. Really? You speak for everybody in London, do you, Mr Mayor? Perhaps you ought to get out in the bloody street and ask people what they want and what they don't want. You know, <coughs> all said and done, you might not like Mr Trump, but he is the world's most powerful statesman. Well... Maybe. Let's just say he is for a moment. He's got every right to come here and talk to us. He is an ally, and we are his allies. Now, the voice of the people can get up and say, We don't want Mr. Trump here. He's this, he's this, he's that. But you swallow everything that Theresa May dishes up for breakfast. Believe it. Go for it. And we're oh so right. But when we want to go and visit the rest of the world, then people start pointing feet. You're British. You ain't coming in our country. You're a bunch of murderers. You're liars. You're scheming. You're this, you're that, you're the other. How the hell can anybody in this country go show their face around the world after what we've done? Huh? Think about it. Think about it. 
the door swings both ways on everything you know we're not that good we're not that good by a long chalk we've got terrible track history terrible record for the way we treat people in this country and in other countries it's all about the dollar even the bullshit about Syria when you look at it Syria there's only four countries left in the world that do not belong to the World Bank they don't have anything to do with the dollar they've got their own currency and they reject the American dollar completely so that tells you right it's not Mr. Trump it's the Rothschilds they are the one that hold the strings to all banking and they want all the world to be under one umbrella but these countries don't want to know look at Iran just in the news today really now Iran has signed this uh, agreement about nuclear you know the nuclear agreement not to have more missiles not to test them so they abided yes they struck a deal with America now America's coming out and saying oh now you're doing missile testing not nuclear but missile testing you broke the agreement well I thought the agreement was about nuclear missiles not um, ballistic missile testing ballistic missile testing to me is something that you make to shoot down missiles that are coming in at you like we do like every other country does they develop weapons to protect themselves nothing wrong with that so that's now in the news and when it all doesn't work what are they going to bring up next you know what's on you know what's on next next week's breakfast table for us none of it's worked it's all been bullshit it's all been lies the whole freaking government's been caught out with the pants down you know don't know what to do where to turn what lies should we concoct next oh hang on let's ask mi5 let's ask mi6 maybe the secret service let's go talk to the americans they might know something that we don't we can bullshit our way through that put something else on the table to scare the living shit out of everybody oh and then the taster was put into the news this week wasn't it <sighs> totally different subject but there was a minister i can't think of his name but you'll know who he is he actually come on news and turned around and said oh well by 2020 there'll be no more petrol and diesel cars in this country we'll all be left we'll all be electric really really we haven't got the infrastructure for it. We'll need at least another two or three nuclear power stations to power it. The technology for electric cars is good, but it's got a bloody long way to go. It's no good to us. Right? Okay in the summer, but what happens when the winter comes along? You've got every bloody gadget under the sun on in the car. And the heat up. got to keep warm. So your car had done 260 mile an hour or 260 miles on a charge you can half that in the winter because it's cold you need the windscreen wipers on you need this on that on the tv the computer and every other bloody shit gadget you carry in the car it ain't gonna work it ain't gonna work so come 2020 no more diesel no more petrol that means trucks the police you know haulage companies i mean by trucks the police the fire brigade, the ambulance, electricity board, water board, telecom, you name it, all running on diesel. Now they've all got to switch to electric. Really? Really? You know, seven ton trucks, 20 ton trucks, the big 40 footers that take all our goods to the supermarkets, you can go running in there and buy it, get your shopping, all running on electric, it ain't gonna work, it's not gonna work. It's another knee-jerk reaction to make people shit scared. It's also already it's already been out in the out in the news that the motor industry in this country country is suffering really bad. They've dropped by a third. Not just one company, all the companies. And the knock-on effect is unbelievable because you've got all the suppliers supplying the motor manufacturers. And us the public, well I know what I want, but us the public can't make our minds up whether do I buy a diesel? Do I buy a petrol? In 2020 it's going to be obsolete. Why should I spend out all that money? In two years time I'm going to have to scrap the freaking thing. 
and buy a bloody electric hairdryer, put some wheels on it and go around and nap. But what about the revenue that comes from it? What about the revenue that comes from oil? <coughs> We're no more diesel, no more petrol. Right, so what are you going to do? You get your new electric vehicles. It's either going to cost you an arm and a leg to charge the bloody thing up, or an arm and a leg just to even use the roads. And then you say, hang on a minute, what roads? They're full of freaking potholes. So they've got to be completely rebuilt. An infrastructure has got to be put in. And who's going to pay for it? You and me. And we put these dumb schmucks in the government and they come out with a bullshit like that and tell us, oh, 2020, no more cars, no more petrol, no more diesel. You all got to buy electric. Really? Do you know what? It's far easier to get rid of that bunch of shits in Parliament than it is to stop driving around in petrol and diesel cars. Just vote the crap out. We need someone in that Parliament that knows exactly what they're doing. We need to keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening in this world. We also need to keep the finger on the pulse of what's happening to us in this country. We can't, well, not we, our government can't even look after us in this country. Everything's been sliced, diced, cut to the bone. There's a lot of changes coming in next month, right across the board from works and pensions, everything, you name it, it's all coming in. You watch when that little brown envelope comes through the door. You're no longer getting this. That's just been cut. You will now have to make arrangements with your break to pay your own debits. We're no longer doing it. All for that, so that our government can give all that hard-earned money of ours to that shower of shit in Europe, which we're going to be stuck in for quite a few more years yet. We still got to pay. You know, remember, we all voted to get out. We won the vote. Oh, well, it ain't going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. We need to go. And all the time they're negotiating, it's costing us £55 million pounds a day, every day, till we get out. And then we're going to cough up one humongous bundle of money just to get a divorce from them ourselves, Really? You'd be better off to drop a fucking bomb on them, excuse my language. I try not to swear, but it makes me bloody sick. So, my friends, I'm going to post this up, get someone to put it on Facebook for me and everywhere else. Please, stop and think. Don't watch the BBC. They're run by the government. They're bullshit. They only tell you what the government tells them to tell you. Go on to ask any news or any other news channel, but don't watch the BBC. They're worse than the newspapers. And you suck it up like a sponge. Most, quite a lot of people out there, now I, I, I've got to make an apology here because I always say people are dumbed down. Lately, some of the programmes that I've been watching on TV prove to me the students in this country, the younger generation, are getting switched on. They are taking note of what's going on, and they don't like what's going on. And they're starting to question. I've always said for a long, long, long time, I've even got a hat somewhere that says, question everything, sign nothing. That's exactly what everybody should be doing. When somebody tells you a story, question do your research. Don't go on Google. Google's run by the, by the bloody media and corporations and the American government. Go on the duck duck search engine. That's a good one. Because they're not, nobody's got their hooks into them to tell you bullshit. They don't want your information. They don't want your history. They don't want your friend's history. They don't want your re face recognition. Even, you know, <laughs> I've got to laugh. I'm not even on Facebook at the moment because I'm in jail. But now, they've sent me all this crap over. Do you agree to our new terms? This is European law now. This, 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 this. They think, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll go along with that. But do they let me out of jail? No. But they still expect me to swallow and agree everything that they spewed out. You know, I'm 
sorry to say people just watch what comes out in the next few weeks we've been on the brink of war I mean come on your old grandpas and grandmas know what it's like to be on the brink of war a lot of you out there that have been through the Falklands know what it's like to fight in a war a lot of soldiers women and men know what it's like to be on the brink of war and fighting a war when they went to Iraq under a false flag which is exactly what this was a false flag you never see the government ministers Theresa May Boris Fast Johnson putting on a uniform picking up a gun getting on the front line looking down the side of his gun and shoot the man in front of him. He wouldn't have the balls. He wouldn't have the backbone. None of them would have the backbone. But no, I'll take that back. There are some people in the government, ex-military men, not a lot of them. Not a lot of them. And I'm not actually turning around and saying that everybody in the government are assholes. There are some in the government that have got their brains switched on. They do think and they question and they query until they get pulled up by the whip and say, we're not having this. You can't go on TV, on TV programmes, saying what you say. It's not party policy. We need you to agree with us. We don't want this, you know, rift, really. Well, that proves to me that some people have got a brain and they use it and they just think, hang on a minute, what you're saying is a bunch of lies. It's bullshit. I know different. But you can always tell the ones that back the Prime Minister, what I call the arse lickers, the Brown Nose Brigade, they'll back her 100% right or wrong because they're climbers. They want to get on top. Maybe I'll be the next Prime Minister. Yeah, I want to get to the top. But the ones that have been there long term, the back benches that have been there for 40 years or more, old, wrinkled, not all of them are old and wrinkled, but they've wised up, you know, so I'm not going to say the whole government is a pile of bullshit, but what comes out of the bloody government is bullshit, and unfortunately we swallow it, well I don't, I come on here and complain, no doubt when I come out of Facebook jail, this will be posted on Facebook for you to ring, it'll be in name and shame for the whole world to read. And I'll guarantee within 24 hours, Facebook comes up and says, your session has ended, you have posted something that goes against our terms, policies, blah, blah, blah. You are now in Facebook jail for another 30 days. They won't get rid of me. They won't kick me off. They won't ban me. They want me to stay, but not have a voice. Well, I've found ways of getting a voice out. You know, Instagram and Twitter are bloody good. Don't ever fall for this crap that Facebook can... Oh, if you link Twitter, if you link Instagram to Facebook, so all your friends are on the list, that's exactly what they want you to do because when they put you in jail on Facebook, you can't use Instagram, you can't use Twitter, you can't use any of them because it's all interlinked and it gets blocked. That's how they shut you up. So don't fall into that trap. Oh. Well, I'm on Twitter, so I want everybody on Facebook to know I'm on Twitter, so it's going to now amalgamate with Facebook. Don't do it. You lose your voice. The government find ways of shutting you up. They love to shut you up. Me at my age, you know, in a couple of months, I'm going to be 68. You know, I've lived a life. It's not been a very good life, I can tell you that for nothing, but I've lived a life. But I know when I'm being told bullshit, by bullshitters, yeah, and that's a government, it's not only this government, it's governments way, way back to when I was a little kid, you know, all coming out with the same old, same old crap, and expect us to believe it, no, no, sorry, I just can't swallow that type of crap, anyway, my folks, it's the end of the month. 
I don't know if we're going to get a bank holiday on Monday because Monday's the 30th, isn't it? So are we going to have bank holiday on Tuesday or are they going to bring it forward a day? That would be good, would it? won't be May. It's the 30th tomorrow. So 1st of May. Or is it going to be next week? We'll see how the government bend the dates again on the calendar to suit their purpose so that everybody goes to work tomorrow and doesn't have a day off. <laughs> that's, that's typical, isn't it? Anyway, enjoy what you've got left of this weekend. Enjoy what's left of this month. Let's hope and pray to the gods, not one god, to the gods. There's plenty of them up there. The one you all seem to pray to is on a freaking tea break. He never listens to anybody. He just lets people die. Everybody else dies. Uh, get another lump of sugar in my tea, mate. Thank you. Oh, but there's people dying there. Yeah, but my tea break, you know. So you pray to the gods. Not one. Okay. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. And hopefully I might see you on Facebook. In the end of next week. That's all for now, folks. <laughs>